I'm going to read out a couple of words on my Trello board here. Um, school, chubby. <laughs> Cheltenham, uni, bodybuilding, muscle on wheels, high rocks, Iron Man. Did all the usual shit from a youngster up until the age of 12. 12 to then go into secondary school, I was fucking shit in my pants. Um, the night before going and for the first day, I remember I was fucking crying. I was like, will it be okay? Um, because I just fucking could not think of anything worse than walking into a school and fucking being surrounded by other people who I didn't know. I loved PE. I loved throwing my weight around. And I put Chubby down because I was that little chubby kid. Um, not fat, but, you know, the, you know, the sort of pre-pubescent or pubescent years of you getting bigger. I think that was where I was at. And... Uh, I wanted to be a footballer. I wanted to be a striker, scoring all the goals, claiming all the glory, but I was fucking horrendous. Um, so as you can imagine, in PE, you get picked last if you're the chubster, and uh, I ended up playing in goal. <laughs> Went on the mission for what phase one of performance for me was, getting really good at being a goalkeeper. And I'm going to pat myself on the back at this point, because after three or four years of doing that, I eventually played in goal for Cheltenham Town, decent standard at the time but then got released because actually I had a realization that I loved the training part, throwing yourself around, keepers union, but I fucking hated playing on the weekends on Saturdays. I just thought it was boring. Cheltenham Town, 16 left, released, went to Warwickshire College, left there, went to America on a scholarship. Fucking buzzing. For I'd say one, two, three years of that, I was pretty serious about my athletic performance. It's probably the lightest, leanest I've ever been. It was around 88, 89 kilos. Um, at the time and just fucking loved it. I was training every day, playing at the weekends, having the crack with another bunch of English lads. It was mint. As you can imagine, at the age of 19, 20, 21, the gym got a hold of me, big time. This was phase two of what I called performance at the time. This is where I had a passion and a love for the aesthetic side of training, more the bodybuilding style of training, which did not complement what I was doing on the pitch. But at this point, I'd sort of had it to myself that I'm not going to make the grade. I'll just get the best out of it that I can. So anyway, I joined a local Snap Fitness, which is a 24-7 gym. You just had a card, tapped it, walked in, got really pally with the geezer who owned it and started training with him. I was introduced to Flex Magazine, Muscle and Fitness Magazine, Bodybuilding.com, T-Nation, Men's Health. Um, I just started to learn as much as I could about different types of training, different ways of building muscle, different supplements, da 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 da. And by the way, this is where I fucking fell in love with Jack 3D, a full fat version, rammed full of DMAA and a shitload of caffeine, which that is a separate story altogether. I was very much approaching my training as bodybuilding from the age of 21 up until around 26, 27. And there was a, a training session in particular where I'd forgot my headphones and I was doing a leg session. And for anybody who's forgot their headphones on a leg day, you may as well fucking go home. I ran back to my car, which was in the car park, and no joke, 200 yards. Ran back into the gym, which was another 200 yards. And I got to the change room, sweating, and I was fucked. It just woke me up. And that's when I then pursued Project Muscle on Wheels. Because around this time, I'd actually fell into cycling as well. Something which I'd never fucking thought I'd do. Um, and it was amazing. Cycling is like fucking, it was escapism, it was great, I can push the pedals, this is amazing. And I threw myself into the Yorkshire Beast, which was basically a 200 mile, mile bike ride, 18,000 feet of elevation across the Yorkshire Dales and the Yorkshire Moors. Fuck me, it was terrible. My ass was hanging off, to say the least. No level of chamois cream was gonna fucking protect me that day. But I had this combination of, right, bodybuilding, but being fucking good at cycling. The jacked cyclist, that was what I was pursuing. Then after that, take us to high rocks. And I think that just totally sparked up again, the whole background of conditioning. And fast forward to today, where we are today, we are currently now pursuing an Ironman. Because it's uncomfortable, I also know, from a mental side as well, I know that there's a fucking lesson in there somewhere. It's coming, I just can't see it yet, and it's going to smash me in the teeth at some point, no doubt. But I'm not going to give up, I'm going to try and find it and hunt it down. So anyway, bring that to where we are today. So with that complete clusterfuck of ultimately what my sort of career has been when it comes to fitness, I've been football, I've been bodybuilder, I've been high rocks, I've been Ironman, I've been cyclist, I've been all these different elements, components, and the biggest thing when it comes to the physical side is recognizing that that is one pillar in the three pillars of personal, physical, and professional. 
but all of the traits that you learn from the physical side are transferable into the personal and professional. Just to put this into context, one thing that I want you to consider when you're trying to discover and figure out what that looks like for you in your world, what you need to do is imagine what it looks like when you get to the fucking end of it. <laughs> because I can only imagine, I can only imagine that when you meet your future self and that version is fulfilled in your potential and you haven't quite made it, I can only imagine that is a completely horrible feeling. So one thing that I like to use that keeps me on route to what I feel in the moment is actually me fulfilling that innate potential. He's always asking myself, what is the fucking alternative? Is everything that we do, short, medium, long term, is always a cost. And you'll usually find that the things that you're pursuing in life for fulfilling your potential, there's not usually an immediate return on investment for that. It takes time, it takes reps, it takes sets. So we'll always just try and use that as a tool. Cost in the moment, cost for the long term. If you look at decisions and processes and choices in that capacity, in that way, you'll usually find that you'll be on a track that's closer and in line with your future self versus a path that's wheel spinning, kicking the can and going all over the place.